All right, so this is going to be part two. Um, this is going to be, I'm going to, this is, uh, I'm working in um, CSC 187. And this is basically, I've got my scene blocked out here. It's going to be a nice, simple scene. I have these basic elements here that match up to these objects on this, in my reference image. Now what I want to do is uh, start, if I can find references, um, I certainly would, but I don't know if these actually exist, so I'm just going to kind of do my best to work off this particular image. So one of the things I'll do is to kind of get as close look as I can at some of these things. So as I look at this, I can see a cube, I see a square path that goes down to a base. I see just lots of just lots of shapes, cur curves, pieces of geometry that I could duplicate using my uh, duplicate special. So I could make a whole bunch of these and separate them like one unit or two units apart. And I can duplicate this, making these knobs using base geometry. Uh, looking at some of the creases and some of those things that I think I can do overall pretty quickly. Um, these extrusions in, additional pieces of geometry, extrusions out, knobs. So I'm, I'm kind of seeing the basics of this. It's not super complicated. I think I can get the basics of it with some very, uh, without going too much geometry, a lot of separate parts, and then individual uh, floors, which I could duplicate uh, from little pieces. So what I'm going to begin doing is just kind of walking through a modeling process of this and trying to get the basic shapes using some very straightforward techniques. So I'm not going to make these super complex and I'm going to just try to keep it as simple as I can and get the basic shape that I need. So as I start working on this particular TV, I'm going to kind of bring it up so I can see it a little bit. <clears throat> and one of the things I do to organize my scene is to use what's called my layer editor. So under my channel box down here, I have layers. And here is uh, the layers that I have. I can assign objects in my scene to that space. So, for example, um, because I might want to put this chair in the layer, or maybe these other objects to get it out of the, get it out of my uh, space, or I might want to put this whole thing in there. So, if I grabbed all of this. And I said, this, this little icon is create a new layer and assign selected objects. So what happens is it creates a new layer and it puts all of them in it. So I can actually turn the visibility on and off of these things. I can actually um, turn them into a template, which means I can't select them, but I can see the wire form. Or a reference, which means I can't select them, but I can see them. Um, and then this way I can just tr treat them like any normal, uh, any normal type of geometry. Now I typically uh, can turn them into a, a reference that I can see, and it just depends. But I might want to move them and get them out of my uh, space. Because I might want to just work with my geometry and just kind of model it here, and then scale it into place, put it into place in a little bit. So. I want to work. I don't want to work in my model as things are kind of in place necessarily. I want to work with my models in a more uh, orthographic type of view. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start out by creating a little uh, object about the shape of this. And uh, So I'm going to start with a cube. Now I might create 
create a cube here. Now I haven't just want to try to look at this a little bit. Now what I want to be thinking about is keeping my geometry as low as as possible. And this looks like it's kind of got a clear distinct edge here, clear distinct edge there, and a clear distinct edge in this space. And this is kind of like its own little face. So I can approach this in different ways. And one, I may find that I try something and it may not work, and I may have to uh, try something else, try it again. But I want to try to get my proportions uh, as accurate as I can. So I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. And the proper thing to do might be to just get the proportions right, I might want to bring in a reference image. And I'm going to try that, actually. I'm not going to bring it into my perspective view. I'm going to bring it into my uh, front camera here. And under View, Image Plane, Import Image. And I'm going to take this uh, and bring it in. Now, it's not quite set perfectly, um, but I just want to kind of use it. And I'm going to turn off my grid for now. And I'm gonna just I'm just gonna I'm doing this kind of as in a rough kind of rough manner. But I want to kind of get the basic shape. And then I might just kind of model it side by side. Because this is obviously at a different angle. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna try to I'm gonna do this kind of quick. So I'm going to just kind of get these, get this, I'm going to just decide on a, sh on a shape, or decide on the size, and decide on a little bit of a, now I'm working a little bit orthographically, not before I do that, I'm not going to do that, because what I want to do is I'm going to actually add some edge loops to this right away, because I want to block, I want to kind of lock in these shapes right here. So this is what I'm going to try. <clears throat> I'm going to go to my insert edge loop and I'm going to put in an edge loop. Now I'm not looking for absolute perfection here because a lot of things aren't perfect. Here and here. And so and then I'm going to kind of put in an edge here. And here. And one down here. So now I have this space and this space, this space and these spaces just kind of blocked out. I'm going to put in a space right here. About like that. Okay, so what I want to do is, I'm going to try this. I'm going to take this space, this space, now I'm going to go into my perspective view. And I won't need to worry about so much the back side. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is take this, move this out of my way. Uh, what I want to do is move this out of my space. I'm going to go into my object mode. Just kind of move this, not this, move my image back so that I can kind of see it here, but it's not in my way here. And I want to show wire on shaded because this is what I want. I don't need the back side of this. One, two, three. Uh, and I can actually get rid of, I'm not going to see the back side, so all of these things actually I can just, let me just get rid of them. So I don't need them to be there. Hit Q to get rid of that. Actually, here's a quick tip. If you select these, and then if I hit the greater, hold down the uh, shift and the greater symbol of the right uh, angle bracket, it'll do what's called a add to selection. So I can start with something and then increase increase it by doing that and I'm just going to hit uh, what I want to do is delete those so I'm going to say delete edges and vertices here because I don't need any of those anymore 
I'm not going to be looking at the back side of this. So if I take this, and if I do an extrusion, so the icon for extrusion looks like a little, uh, a little uh, uh, skyscraper on a plane, I think. And if I uh, get this, I can extrude out. Let me go into my perspective view. And if I use this, I can lift this up a little bit. Okay, if I lift that up a little bit, I get this uh, here. And I don't want this curvature, but I will have to tweak that in just a second. So I can pull that out just a little bit, just like so. And then it gives me that, and then I'm going to go down and I can't quite tell if that is coming out or not, but that gives me this nice face. And it gives me this nice edge here, which I might want to work with in a little bit. These will have the little point, these will have these, well, maybe they have a different geometry. I'll put some objects here and a knob there. And I want these faces to be, so I'm going to take this edge and this edge and this edge, and I'm going to do a scale in Z and flatten them. Basically, I'm going to pulling this towards the center to, to, to align them all in the same plane. And then if I take, oops, if I take those and move them out, you can see it's more square now, and I definitely want that. If I take this one and this one, I hit R to scale, and then I move this, I get it more square. And that's what I want. I want a nice square edge right there. Okay, so I have that space. This space, this space down to here will actually be a bunch of different geometry. And this, this looks like it's kind of sticking out too, but I'm not sure about that. So I can't quite tell if it's in or out. It has knobs on it, so it would make sense it was out. If it was, then I might want to pull that out as well, but I'm going to just leave it kind of like that. Now, I'm going to make another piece of geometry to put below this, so I'm going to just simply make a cube, so I'm going to name this object, this is going to be my, I'm going to name the transform node, because then it'll be passed on, so this is my TV, oops, TV uh, 1 geometry. Let's see, and then I'm going to create a base. So this would be my TV, TV on base geom. Just you got to give it some kind of name, um, and what that name is isn't always doesn't always have to be. Sometimes it's hard to make up a name, and so I'm going to move that. So this is going to be the the bottom here, and it's got some nice rounded corners, which I will consider. Now one thing to keep in mind is that geometry wants to round or it wants to pull into a cube. So notice even though this is a cube, we have different levels of smoothness. One, so this is key on my keypad one. If I hit two, you can see how it's wanting to smooth. And then three, you can't see the bounding box. So when you're in two, this is where you can know how to, uh, when you want to add, when I want to do what's called an insert an edge loop, it will hold the tension, this icon right here, it'll hold the tension of this geometry. So if I pull this, add an edge here, and I'm clicking on the, I'm clicking on the edge, this edge to trans to break it in half. 
notice that it pulls the geometry. This is like, this is called tension. Notice over here, this is all rounded. But if I want a piece to go this way, I have to click on this edge to put an edge across. So I'm going to click here, and then I'll drag this up. And notice that it doesn't, farther away that is from the from the next edge, the looser the tension, the sharper the tension, the closer I get. So if I want a rounded corner like this, I'm going to end up putting in, uh, I'm going to go back to my tool, putting in some corners right here. Now watch how it snap. Notice how I get this nice rounded edge. See that? And over here, this is more, a little too round. So because I wanted to go this way, I have to snap to drag it over here. And notice how I have that nice rounded edge now on both corners for my for my the bottom of my object. So I'm looking at this. So it looks square, but when I smooth this, if I were to smooth this, it would hold that shape. Now with this one, this one's going to be a little bit it's got edges on it already. And if I were to try to round it, it would look like this. I don't even need the bottom because this bottom face here, down here, if I go into wireframe, these don't need to be there. So I could actually delete those. If I go back to five, so I have some sharp edges, or some rounded edges already. But I'm getting these basic things. And what I might do, just for an edge, I'm gonna add some additional edges here. So I'm gonna add an edge here, and add an edge here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to extrude this face out. So I'm gonna say, extrude this out a little bit. So my shortcut icon is not listed. So I can actually take this, hold down. Then middle mouse, I'm holding down my middle mouse. And I'm gonna drag it up to my shelf and put it in. Uh, and I don't see it listed up there. It's okay. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to extrude it forward and I'm going to use the blue arrow to pull it out a little bit Oop, right there. Now I'm going to look at it from the orthographic view to make sure it aligns with my other one. If I want my tool to get smaller, I can hit the minus key or if I want it to get bigger, I can hit the plus key. So if I want I'm going to change this and I'm going to leave that tool. Okay. I'm going to go back to perspective and I'm going to leave that like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to also take this face and I'm going to extrude it down. And it looks like it has just a little bit of an edge to it. No, actually, I am going to pull that out as well. Just a wee little bit. All right, now I have these basic areas. Okay, and I will need something up here, which I will place in a little bit. All right. Now what I want to do is go to object mode. Oh, definitely save your scene. So I haven't saved my scene at all, which is a bad form. Scenes. So this will be power windows scene version one MB. Make sure it's in my scenes folder. Make sure it's in my project folder. And it is, I spelled rush wrong. Our Windows scene, 
version one, save as, and I'm gonna now save another one, save scene as version two, just so I have a backup version two, and then I'll say um, TV one model. Save. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this little piece right here that's going to go right up on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Create, Polygonal Primitive Cylinder, and I'm going to, this is not going to be much of a piece here. Uh, I'm just going to reduce it. Let's see, I'm going to go my vertices. I'm going to take this. I'm going to scale this down a little bit. I'm going to move it down. It looks like it's just a small little cone shape, so I'm going to kind of do something like this and then go into object mode, uh, select it. Right, I screwed up. Modify center pivot, put the center pivot back in place. I'm gonna then move it up, excuse me, move it up. And I'm gonna move it over. I'm using my top view. I'm gonna use my shade wireframe and I'm gonna basically set it here in the middle. And let's scale it down because it looks like it's, oh, I don't know, about like possibly like that. And some of these details are going to be, you know, just something I guess at, because I can't really tell how big it is, but I just estimate based on my, based on my images. And I'm going to just add a little bit of a, yeah, I'm going to go face in from the side, say, oops, I'm going to frame this in, and I'm going to do something. I'm going to select all the ones on the bottom by selecting all of these and holding down shift and middle selecting those. So what I hope is that I only have the bottom faces and nothing else. And all I'm going to do is extrude this down a little bit, like so. That just gives me a little bit of geometry. And I don't even need those bottom faces now, so I'm going to delete them. So I'm going to hit delete. And then I'm going to hit object mode. And I'm going to hit W, or sorry, yeah, W, and move this down. I'm going to do something like that. So this is the base. Uh, this is TV1. Uh, I don't even know what to call that. TV1, TV1 top. Uh, it's called a bracket base. Bracket base. All right, it's a TV mount base. Okay. And then what I want to do is take these faces, and I should have. If I hold this one and I double click the one next to it, uh, if you hold one and double click next to it, it'll take a whole loop. This one won't because it is like this. So instead of trying to do that, I'm just going to go across and then I'm going to deselect all of these by holding down the shift key. Then I only get these here and I'm going to hit extrude and I'm going to say, uh-uh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to hit this cycle index and I'm going to go from the middle by doing a, what's called a uniform scale down. And then I'm going to hit the G button to repeat a process, and I'm gonna extrude that up a little bit. So this is gonna be that little, I don't know, that, that gap here, it's like a big washer here um, that the, the arms are gonna come off of. So that's just this little piece there. And that's all I'm gonna do for that right now. So this is what I've got so far. And I'm looking at this. So what I'm gonna do next is maybe make a, the knob for it. And I'm just gonna continue to kind of piece in these. But what I wanna do is I will make these pieces next. And I'll try to make a shortcut. And this is actually at an angle. So it's 
broader at the base and wider here. And I will do that uh, later as a different step. a different tool for that. What I want to do is put in these little uh, louvers here over the speaker. So I will go in and create a cube, primitive cube, and I'll call that TV1, TV1 louver. I don't even know how to spell that. Spell louver, I think. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it small, make it wide. Now this is something important that I want to do that I haven't done yet, but because it's going to be something I duplicate later on, I may just make one piece because <clears throat> I'm not ready to add details yet. So I'm only going to make this one and then I'll come back to it because what's going to happen is I'm going to need to add details to capture the light through beveling and mm, well actually I can do it a different way too I can do it a different way but I have to bevel it and so I'm just going to leave that right there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the parts I don't need so I don't need the back side so I'm going to go into object or I'm going to go into component mode face I'm going to get rid of that Delete it. I just don't need that. I'm going to go back to object and I'm going to place this in here like so. So that is this one right there. And then the rest of them will just be duplicates of it. And what I want to do is I'll go ahead and add this piece. Um, but because objects that are polygonal like this are just paper thin edges, it's just an a plane against a plane, what we want to do is add levels of detail that actually make this look uh, nice. Um, and so I don't want to get into that just yet, but I will demonstrate uh, that with this piece. So notice how this has some, some nice edges to it that capture the light. Um, you can't see it perfectly here, but most things have an edge around it that allow light to, um, you know, there are little edges where uh, the craftsman's rounded them or sat, sanded them off. So this is going to be no different as I start to kind of look at this, and I'm just going to do these right here. And I'm not, and what I want to do, it may be better to go ahead and just grab these just so that the geometry comes off. All right. All right. Now these are. These are small edges that will capture the light. Actually, for now, I'm just going to do these. One, two, three. And see if I can get it. I've got a lot of edges here. And this one. If I go up to I'm going to edit mesh and I'll hit bevel and I hit my uh, options box and hit edit reset and if I hit bevel notice that it gives me this nice edge it took that and basically split it and I have the ability to adjust the thickness of that by adjusting this so this is going to be that little sanded edge if I want to add more segments to it I can to kind of round it the more segments I have and the bigger the gap, the more rounded it will look. So this will give me a nice rounded feature here. And I want to do the same along this corner and this corner as well. Because it will just add, and I don't need to do it on everything necessarily. 
but it is a feature that I want to add to my model that will help capture the light. And what I mean by that is the light will, will, will hit those edges. Let me go back to bevel, bevel those edges, add a segment to round it a little bit, shrink that edge up. Then I'll get this really good looking uh, model. And you can see in the history, I have this building up of this all these steps that I've done. So I can actually go back to this and I can actually change it. But if I change it later, it can affect what happens uh, next. So here I am. I'm going to do that to this feature here. So this edge here, 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 and here. That's why I'm keeping the geometry very, very simple. And if I hit bevel, and it will bevel that, and I can, I prefer to use these to kind of give myself a little bit. Since that's so small, I'm not going to add too much geometry to it. All right. Now, if I take this, um, and if I look at this in orthographic view, Let's see, I'm going to display my grid. Mm, those are pretty big units. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to move it too much. I'll just hit Control Duplicate, and I will move it up. Give it about a space. So I'm just going to eyeball it. And I'll take both of those, Control Shift, and hold that. Control Duplicate, and move both of those up. And I'll grab all of these, hit Control, Control D, move all of those up, and again, Control Duplicate. Now I just kind of start building off of that, and then maybe just one more time, Control Duplicate. Then I have those there. I don't need them. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And it's not too bad. If I want to, I can grab all of them. Just kind of space it out a little bit. Maybe just move it up like so. Then I have my geometry right there. Okay. So I'm just continuously adding these things and continuously modeling. And I'm going to add some knobs here. I'm going to add this knob here. And then I'll get to the TV and this arm, and then I'll, I'll have it finished. So I'll go ahead and add a, looks like a cylinder, create polygonal primitive cylinder. I'm going to call this TV1, TV1 knob. And what I'm going to do is actually go into its inputs and I'm going to get rid of these cab subdivisions. And I'm going to, oops, I don't need to change anything. I just want to scale it down. And I'm going to Increase the subdivision. Well, I'm leave it like that. And I'm going to turn it around X. Oops. 90. Scale it down. And I'm going to move it in place out here, like so. And buttons keep hitting the wrong button and I need to actually look at this Oops. try to get the scale right so the size is going to be a little bit kind of just look at this estimate the size of it 
I'm going to go down a little bit. I can't quite tell what I see. Looks like maybe I have a knob right there. But it looks like it might be like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame that. And I'm going to take these edges, these faces here, double click, and I'm going to extrude that out. So I'm going to hit my quick extrusion, pull out on the extrude out. So this translates. This is notice that this pulls out the local translate Z axes. You can see the difference here. So what I'm going to do is pull this out a little bit, and then I'm going to go in and take this one. And I'm going to hit G to extrude it out a little bit. And I don't need the backside, so I'm not going to bother. And remember, this is going to be rounded here. So I'm going to go around to the backside. I'm going to get rid of these. This, this, and double click and hit delete. So here is my, here is a simple model. Now, one thing I want. I don't necessarily need to worry about it. I'm going to take this face and I'm going to say extrude down. So I'm going to say extrude down. And I'm going to extrude down uniformly just in a little bit, right? And then I can take this, create this knob if I want. Uh, if I want to, I could take this and then uh, I'm going to go down just a little bit like I've done. Then I'm going to hit G again. And then I'm going to pull this up, and then I'm going to do my own little bevel. I'm going to hit G again, and I'm going to hit Uniform Scale, and I'm going to pull it out, and voila, I put my own bevel on this. So there's my own bevel. And all I need to do then to make this knob is to put a cube across it like a little handle thing. And so I'm going to basically go up to Primitive Cube, and I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this TV1 knob handle. Well, it's not really handle, I don't know what to call it. TV1 knob, uh, let's say cross, cross bar, let's call it that. And I'm simply going to go into my orthographic view. scale this down. Now this is something something like so and something like so. And we'll wireframe, move this over a little bit. You can see that it's a little thinner. So I'm going to just do this. And I'm going to go into here, hit frame. Notice that I don't need that much. Take off the back side. I don't need that at all. Don't need to even calculate those types of things. Object mode. Move forward. I'm going to add my own bevel on this. So I can just quickly say face. Extrude forward. I'll do a uniform scale down. Like so. And I have a little bevel. Do a little bit more on the Y, capture that edge, and then I am going to go back to object mode and move that forward so that it sits in front of the object here, like so. And look at my reference. I don't think it actually goes that far, does it? I can't tell. Looks like it stays within this rim. Maybe something like this. Not gonna, it doesn't matter all that much. And I'm going to rotate it slightly. And these two things make up my knob. And I can move it into position here on my TV screen. Where are my TV here? All right. So I'm going to continue to do this type of stuff. Let's see how much time I've taken. 
right, 40 minutes, it's not bad. And so you can see how this takes a long time. I mean, you can, you have to think about all these things. You have to spend time uh, building up the model. Looks like there's another knob of some sort and then several little knobs right here, which I can just do quickly with basic geometry. So these two things make up my, my knob. Sticking that geometry on there. That knob's off the surface a little bit, so. And then I want to have these three little knobs and then these little, probably rush or letters of some sort. These are little objects that I can't really see, but they will cast shadows. So I'll go ahead and make another cylinder. So this is going to be a knob, TV1, TV1 knob, uh, small, I'll call them dials. This is actually a dial. These would be knobs, but TV1 knob, left, so that'll be this one. So for this, all I'm going to do is kind of the same thing I just did. I'm going to get rid of my cap. I'm going to take my face, and I'm simply going to just make my own little bevel here. I'm going to raise it up. I'm going to scale it uniformly in. Uh, and I'm going to do it again. Let's hit G, and I'm just going to scale that in like so. That's all I'm going to do. And then at the bottom, I'm just going to say vertex. I don't, I'm going to grab these, and I'm going to move them up like so. Go into object mode. And I'm going to go into what's called modify center pivot to bring that pivot back up. And then just take this. Now these might be thick, a little bit thicker. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to rotate to that in 9 degrees and scale it down. And I might make it a little bit thicker, like so, for interest. And I'll bring that out front. Come on. Looks like it's going to go under here, so I'm going to go in the orthographic view, shade. And I'm going to. Maybe I'll put that in the middle, one in the middle, just to get the alignment there. And it's a little bit smaller than that, so I'm going to kind of go with that. And it's in this little section, so what I'm going to do is, looks like it fits kind of in there, just about like the way I've done, done it. And I'm going to say Control Duplicate, and I'm going to move it these over because I said this was left this will be center now I'm done shift and move this so this would be called center I'll recall what I call it says left it should be TV oops TV one knob left and I'm gonna copy this TV lot TV one knob control copy grab this TV1 knob, center, and then one more duplicate, control D, I'm going to move it over, and I'll call this TV knob, right, and then I'm going to just kind of, orthographic view, just kind of adjust them so I'm happy with what they look, they look like they're in the middle. And there we go. Then we have some things here, which I, they might be letters. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some 3D text for that. And and then there's a knob here, which I think I'm going to just simply duplicate the center one. Control, control D, and I'm going to move it up like this. Scale it down a little bit. And I'm going to take this and control duplicate that. And I'm going to move it down and scale it to fit that knob because it looks kind of like it's flat like it's sticking out so I'm just going to kind of do that I'm going to make it thicker it looks like it might be kind of a weird little knobby thing and I'm just going to do this and call it a day I'm not going to looks like it's 
looks like this is kind of this and this is kind of more so I'm just gonna do this with it so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna call that good and I'm gonna put the letters R-U-S-H right there and right now this is looking pretty decent I need some feet on there, which are going to be no big deal. So basically a couple cylinders for the TV1 feet. TV1 feet. Uh, and so I'm going to use just a quick scale. <clears throat> Looks like uh, that could do it. And go from the orthographic view here. This is my. I certainly don't need tops of it. I just need the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go pull it out, delete the faces on top. Should have done this before, but it's what happens. I'm going to say zero. Delete that face. It doesn't need to be there. And I will use technically the face on the bottom doesn't need to be there either. So I don't even need that because I'm not going to be calculating it. Object. I'm going to slide that in like so. Slide it up like so. And it looks like it's right at the edge. So I will go ahead and do that. I'm going to use that line as my Control D duplicate and I'm just going to slide that back there. Sorry about that. And Control Select and Control D both. And then just move those down like that. And that should be good enough. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, I'm going to hit my I'm gonna save. Now what I want to do is I want to kind of work with this. This is going to be a little trickier. I'm going to go ahead and get my TV set up on top. So I'm going to create a cube. And this is going to be TV1. TV1. Uh, let's call it the box. Set. Uh, so this is the TV set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Lift this up into space here, and I'm going to estimate. So what I want to do is, I'm going to just do a quick insert edge loop. Actually, I could do it a different way, but I want to do an insert edge loop across here and across here. Because when I smooth that, it's going to give me this shape, which could be kind of a nice round, kind of a nice round TV shape, right? I'm going for this. So if I use my bounding box or this as my kind of gauge and I scale this, I can kind of give myself it's kind of a slightly wider than it is tall. It's got kind of a nice around uh, uh, so what I want to do is pull this out a little like this maybe just slightly in the upper region like so and then what I want to do is because this is a little different um, I'm going to take these faces here, two, three, four, I don't need the back side, and I'm going to extrude them down in one space, in their own space here, straight down like so. That gives me this rim and this inner surface. So what I want to do is take this, double click that, and this is going to give me just a slight little edge if I pull that out. And then what I want to do 
is take this little edge. I'm going to do an insert edge loop here. I'm going to say insert edge loop right around this. And then I'm going to pull that out just a little teeny bit, actually. It may need to go in. I don't know if it should go out or in. Might need to go in. I may want to bring it in. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, then I'm going to take this face again and I'm going to extrude it in just to divide it again uniformly. And then G again. Because and again, sometimes I might make a mistake. What I'm thinking, what I'm doing, and what I'm thinking might not always work. So here is, and I'm going to put an insert edge loop around this and this, because right now it looks pretty good. It's not quite there. What it needs is some more tension, I think. So insert edge is going to... Add some tension across the back. There's nothing back there, really. And what I want to do is adjust some of the. See, since it's like this, I don't think I can. I'm going to add an edge loop here and here, kind of square it up a little bit. To go into object mode, take a look at this, and hide my wire for shades. Because so I just want to look at the shape. Because so I don't want it to be too hard, those edges. I don't want the edges to be too hard. Oops, what am I doing there? Like I said, um. This is a tricky one. I don't want to, I want to be a little more round. Let's see. If I take this edge, if I scale it. Scale this edge. Now I'm just experimenting here, so. If I scale this down, so I'm just kind of adjusting shapes a little bit. Not particularly happy with this edge. So I may I may delete it. So sometimes you gotta make decisions on that. I'm not sure I like it. Uh, what I want to do is say delete edges. I'm going to go back to this for a second. Oops, I'm going to shift. And, oops, that was a mistake. Do this, do this. All right, so this is kind of what I want to do. I'm just going to shape this a little bit more. And probably a good idea is to use my TV object as a reference. So as a, I should be doing, which sometimes I forget, I need to use this as a guide to kind of shape this screen a little bit. So what I'm going to do is kind of, no, I'm just going to do this, do this, and then move it over a little bit. What I need to do is just kind of modify these, and I may have made a error with my 
how much geometry I put in on this thing already. So I may have already overdone it a little bit. But I'm just going to grab these guys and move them down. Move this over and up over a little bit. Grab these and move them over. Not so bad. Wireframe. All right. It's not horrible. How does it look? Smooth it. No, I, I don't love it. I don't love that shape. Mm, this kind of happens. Sometimes you have to just work on stuff. This looks like it's a little bit uneven. Now, I'm going to grab this, and what I want to do is actually pull it out a little bit. So this edge, I'm going to do a little bit of some edge work here. So I'm going to pull this edge up, pull this edge up, pull this edge in a little. So I'm going to scale it down, and then I'm going to pull it out a little bit. So I'm going to kind of create this sharper edge. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into component mode, the vertex, and I'm going to grab that central vertex. And I'm going to use a tool called Soft Select. And what's, what Soft Select is going to do is it's going to give me the ability to add weight to my selection. So currently, you can see these different colors. As they go from yellow to black, I have influence, so if I want to add some sort of curvature to that screen, like I am right here, it will allow me to do that. And that is kind of nice, because that gives me that nice bowed look. And I think the TV is just a little bit thinner than what I have. I'm going to turn this off now and just kind of Bring that in like so. Don't really know what the TV looks like in the back. What I might do is just select that, pull that out a little bit, and maybe some bow it a little. That's giving me, oops, actually, don't want to do that. I don't want it to hold that so I can choose between volume, so it's kind of like a balloon around it or surface, where it's just going to won't, uh, won't grab that. So I'm going to pull this back out like I had. So I just kind of have this domed screen with this nice little rim around it. So I'm going to say, OK. So I don't hate that. And I think it just needs to be a little wider. Maybe just a little wider like this. So from there, put it on my pedestal a little bit. It looks like it might be a little big. It's a little, maybe it isn't wider. It's a little more square. Something like that. And move it over. Looks a little cockeyed, I don't know. I'm going to turn this off. Yeah, my first attempt isn't stellar. I'm going to clean these edges up a little, straighten them up. I don't love it, but if I have time, I'll go back and maybe work on it some more. So one thing I have to do is do the best I can in the amount of time I have, especially when you work on projects like this. Looks pretty good so far. All right, now the hardest part here, it's not going to be that hard, is to extrude this arm up. So there's a trick to this, and it's going to be the use of a cube, like so. I'm going to scale down, and I'm going to call this the arm, well, TV1 arm. TV1 arm. And be working 
this view. I'm going to move it to about where I want it. So here's this. I need to go from here up to here. So it's pretty easy, really. I don't need all of that much geometry. I'm going to go here, go to face, and I'm going to extrude. And I'm going to go here. I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to rotate the face to follow this edge. And I'm going to hit G. I'm going to do a little bit more. Pull this up. Rotate the face to kind of follow that edge. Hit G. Pull this up. Lift it up a little bit. Rotate the face to follow that edge. Hit G. Pull this up. Move this over. Rotate the face to follow that edge. Maybe pull it down a little. And hit G one more time. Lift it up. And then uh, from there, I can stop. So there I have a nice little arm that I can manage pretty easily. And it looks like it just has a little square on the end. So if I want to, I can just take this, extrude this up a little bit again, and then take the faces of it all the way around. I could have done the shortcut and then hit G and extrude those out to make a little cube. And if I want, I could take these and, and just shape it however I need to make it look like a cube. And so this arm then We'll need some edges, so I'll go in my edge loop, so my under edge, insert edge loop, and I'm going to hit the two, and what I want to do is insert, put in some tension here on this, uh, around the base, and up at the top, Here's where I want it, and there. So I have this nice um, the one around here to hold that there, and that looks pretty good. Notice it has a nice rounded edge there, along here. I go into oops, go into object mode. You can see that much better now. So here's a very nice and uh, move my TV back a little bit. Now it's a little bit. adjust these. Let me look at my picture uh, so I can see. It's pretty small. So I may just scale this down a little bit more. But what I can do is just simply, because there's such little geometry, oops,
work on other painting. There we go. This kind of comes off of this. I don't really know. I don't know for sure. I might have to do this. Take this, take the vertices of this and lift them up to make it look like this comes off of there. And maybe take the vertices of this scale them down so it looks like it comes out of there. And a lot of this is subjective because I don't know this doesn't exist in my world. I'm not looking at it. I'm just kind of making I'm making assumptions here. And I'm just just kind of making it look the way I think it looks. I take this edge rotate it a little bit more, could scale it in a little bit, take this edge, scale it in a little bit. And just kind of decide what you need to do, vertex. I'm going to take these vertices here and just move them into the TV. I could certainly do that if I wanted to. And just kind of decide what you want. It's going to be in the background, so I don't have to worry so much about it. And here's a nice little trick. I'm going to say Control D, and then I can just say I can just rotate it, or I can say Scale across negative X. So I'll just put a negative value on here, and then I have. It flipped around in the other direction. And then I just make this adjustment here. And slide it up. Grab the vertices. Slide it. Something like that. We'll look at this from here. Now this is a ooh, not quite smooth enough for me, so I would smooth this using a just a smooth function, which will make this a little more. Go to mesh, and let's say smooth, and I can adjust the divisions up to two or three, which will just make it that much more smooth. I'm going to do the same thing over here, control G, and then divisions three. Not control G, just G. So here's my TV. If I smooth that, It's very smooth. You can see the nice, beautiful edges that I have on that particular thing. So there is, there's basically my TV that you can see that kind of fits in with my scene here. I'm going to save. This would be a good time to save. So you can kind of see how I am working that. Now, if I take all of these pieces and I say Control G, I get a group. And I'll call this TV1. Oops. Call this TV, TV1. And I do GRP. Oops, GRP to GRP to be a group. And if I look in my outliner here, all of those pieces are inside of it. So I can move it with just one control. And I'm going to say center that because you'll notice that it's at the origin and my object is not. And I'm going to say uh, modify center pivot. Then I can put this by moving the group everywhere. Now, if I were to accidentally move the wrong thing and then control the group, I'm still moving it. But I don't want to do that. I want to make sure I move the whole group. And if I go into my two views, and I go into this scene. And if I go into panels, perspective, shot cam. And remember, I have my scene hidden. I want to replace this with this. And kind of scale this down a little bit. I move it into place. Rotate it a little bit. Move it a little bit. So now I've kind of got it here, set in my scene. You can see it. I will hide my wireframe. 
Well, there's my TV right now. To take the place of this one. Oops, let me hide this stuff. So there is my shot with my TV kind of in place. If I hit my select something within the group and I hit an up arrow, I can continue to kind of scale that down a little bit until I'm happy with it. But for the most part, I'm going to back this off. It's going to be up up to the top of that chair. So this this feels pretty good for me, to me in this scene. I'm going to raise it up so I can see the feet. And then this geometry here, I can hide that if I want to. Display, hide, select it. And I have my beautiful, oops, and that too. Yeah, let's move my, let's just move this up. And grab that and just say hide, display, hide selection, control H, hit this, up arrow, and move it down. Okay? So that's one piece of geometry in this scene that I have. Now I'm going to be off to make some others. So I'm going to follow that same process to make another TV and another TV. And I might be able to just duplicate some if I can. So as I start to build things in this scene, I will just continue to do basic modeling, just like I have done for this. All right.